aisle 12, a tale of grocery store romance. I stand behind the lonely counter, checking, sliding, beeping. Our, our eyes meet. She begins to flounder. He's in aisle eight dreaming. A woman comes through my line. She is buying creamed corn. I can feel the slow pass of time. An old man looks for porn. In the back, in the magazine rack, I look up from the bag of grapes. He is placing tomatoes in the sack. We must have intertwined, intertwined fates. Locked in position, staring, he gives me the signal. I drop a can of pickled herring. My senses begin to tingle. He wishes me to call him later. Images rush through my mind. I grab the bag of tater tots. He is looking at the time and dreaming. Of holding me tenderly, my blue vest against his waiting impatiently for the end of our shift. Save money, live passionately. Walmart. <laughs> The title is, Where Was I? You branded your cattle. You always rode tall through sagebrush, brush, pine trees, cactus and all. You captained wagon trains through all those years, charted mountains and rivers, hunted bears, cougar, deer. Remington and Russell painted our lives whole. I might be in the background or not there at all. You left me to chase your wild dreams of gold. I stayed, dealt with reality, watched time grow old. I reflect on those memories with a tear and a sigh and try to remember, where was I? Where was I? I look back, see labors and the children I bore. Was that all I was? Why can't there be more? Endless those births were. There was no other way. I loved and cared for them, wept when they died. Was I not always close by you, worked by your side? So often you left me alone with the wind and a wide prairie sky that went on without end. Dugouts, sawed houses, and tar paper shacks, and acres of loneliness along with all that. No mention in history of all that we did. Like smoke from your campfires blown away on the wind. Whatever was done was done only by man as though women did nothing to settle the land. History resounds with the battles you won, blood soaked land lives that were done. It says nothing of the quiet ones that we fought, strangled by laws in which we were caught. Laws that restricted us from owning our lives by law, lumped with idiots, those who were your wives. I try to find reasons, but they just aren't there. Or how could I do all that and, not, and you not see or care? All right, the first one I'm gonna read is called Lava Plant. Um, kind of inspired by the Billy Collins' poem where he was kind of just exploring one, you know, one item and all the possibilities that that, that gives to somebody when you look at it. So I kind of had uh, fun with that approach to this little thing in my living room. <clears throat> Soaking in her little plastic dish, she frays her body out under the sun. The pink elbows of each back-bending petal nearly rub against each other. Her toes clench the rock like the eagle grips his mountain wall, strong enough to pull it into the sky. She uses her tiny lava mountain as a straw, sucking water through all the way to the wide tips of her fingers. She's marooned on a dead rock in a bowl. Or, she is the lava, erupting from her miniature volcano, simmering over her plastic caldera, she perpetually bursts, slowly overflowing the sky with grapefruit wings and, and fire vines that reach, then tumble, then settle in place, 
molding into the new muscular shoulder outlines of a growing dome. And there is no rock or separate plant. You cannot pull them apart without ruining her growth. Either they intertwine actively or both will drown dormant in a water dish. This is called Daydreaming of Reno on the Couch. I lived in Reno for a while and absolutely hated it, so I thought it'd be funny. My favorite Reno, my favorite memory is of Tahoe, which is 45 miles from Reno. <clears throat> Lapping Tahoe at twilight in Lee's white Cadillac, we interrupt each other's interruptions. Skyscraping pines border the twisting highway, spikes on a black steel gate. The lake sits unbroken, a purple dish of quiet white dots. Cutting through the mountain's handle, we pull off to a lookout. A puff of clouds brush strokes its way across the water. Someone turns the music all the way down. We listen, open window. A fish, or something else, bites at a shooting star, sending the sky back up, one ripple at a time. This is called House Cat. Um, it's kind of exploring uh, probably the best lifestyle one could have. <laughs> My day hovers by at the speed of fog. I sing. I sing on a sunstripe in the blue carpet. Fanning open and closed, I adjust and readjust and melt. The humidifier lullabies all lazy afternoon. One of my blinks catches. When I hear you, I scramble to the shoe pile on the doormat as if I've been there all day. <laughs> I sing and figure eight through and around and through your legs until you notice, picking me up. I routinely race to my spot on the bed, overlapping yours. I sing in a crescent, waiting for your fingertips, your baby talk, your smell. But you roll in the angry vacuum cleaner instead. <laughs> letting it shake the floor as you drop the front end. I cut into the next room with my ears back. You find me in the next room underneath the desk, coiled into a hissing knot. Three swipes under my chin untangle the Halloween from my back. I sing you to sleep inching closer to your undulating, lullabying belly. This is called Waitress on her fifth graveyard shift of the week. And uh, it's a, if you've ever been to a Denny's or a Perkins in the middle of the night, you might have seen this type of person. And I used to be one of these type of people myself, so. <clears throat> 3 a.m. might as well be noon for Raleigh. The coffee stains small talk behind the dirty name tag. She'll call you Hun or Shug. Like a greasy hummingbird, she bounces around, clinking ashtrays that drip dry in little towers. You'll never see her replace the piece of gum she's smacking. She's seen it all at least twice through her bloodhound droop. Her crow's feet tap dance when she laughs at her own jokes. She takes her lunch break early tonight, at midnight. Her rings tap the counter as she washes down shingle toast and burnt coffee. The bell over the door doesn't ding for two hours. She resembles the cigarette that sprinkled ashes on your menu, bouncing on her questions. She must have pocketed millions by now. <laughs> Wrinkled, syrupy, cornerless ones. Kicked back into her world for hairspray, cigarettes, an occasional drink with a stranger. By now, she's already showing you her pictures, likening them to you. She holds one up next to your face, making you a son, until you leave your goodbye note of crumpled bills, dinging the door on your way into the silent morning.